So I have this question, and and I keep going back and forth with everything. Like there are, there's a segment of the fan base that would be of the idea of trading Trey Young. And then there's another section of the fan base that thinks that's ridiculous and that's the guy that we've got to build around. But but there is definitely, I don't want to say some momentum, but there certainly isn't as much support or as many people rallying around Trey Young is what there used to be. Now, I don't know if it's because some of the things have become public, just the feud with Nate McMillan. I don't want to say, I don't know if feud is the right, the right word, but disagreements that Nate McMillan and Trey Young have. But there does there just doesn't seem to be as much overwhelming support for Trey Young is what there used to be. And, and why is that? Well, I mean, certainly the lack of success for the team when Trey Young is making super max money, like he's not just making max money, he's making super max money because he got third team all NBA last year, kicked in all the super max deals and everything like that. So when you have a guy that's making super max money, everybody's going to point to him. Now, have they built the best roster around him? No, but it's not like he's played with bums. You know, I mean, we've talked about they're starting five when healthy. So look at it from this year. Murray, Trey, Hunter, uh, Capella, and John Collins. That's a pretty good starting five. You know, you've got a, a decent wing defender in Hunter. You've got a guy who can do some inside-outside stuff in John Collins. You have one of the better rebounders in the NBA and a pretty decent rim protector. And then you should have a dynamic backcourt. You know, Trey is a star in the league. DeJounte Murray is one of the best two-way players in the entire NBA. But it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like there's as much love for Trey Young as what there's been. And look, there's a lot of people that want to get rid of Nate McMillan as soon as they possibly can and bring in a coach. And we talked about the idea of, you know, the dead spin article that said, is Trey Young a coach killer? Well, you know, in all honesty, I mean, if you if you're looking at this objectively, if you're if you're going on to your third coach in six years and, and you're a star player. There is something wrong with that. You know, and I think some of the things go back to what Trey Young said last year. That when he said the regular season doesn't matter and we're just trying to get through it and we want to get to the playoffs. You know, that didn't sit well with a lot of people. And then you went out and pretty much laid an egg all through the regular season. Right. I think you got the number nine seed, but then you had to be in two play in games. And, you know, you were coming off the Eastern Conference Finals where we thought, okay, we're going to be, you know, in pretty good shape and maybe we can be a top four or five seed, but we should certainly be like a four through six seed. And then it just kind of all went away. And, and I think when you're the star and you make that super max money and you come out and say, the regular season doesn't matter and things like that, you know, to your, you know, paying customers, your your ticket, you know, your your fan base, you know, that's that's your ticket holders. I just think that that rubbed people the wrong way. And then you compound it with we weren't a very good team during the regular season. And then we've not been a very good team during the regular season of this year. You know, even adding DeJounte Murray, you know, what are we a game above 500 right now? and still sitting eighth in the Eastern Conference. And yeah, again, a couple, three games here, and we could be, you know, five or six, or we could be, you know, 10, 11. But there doesn't seem to be as much of that just belovedness or just rallying around Trey. And I do think that when you talk about the comments from last year, and it's not like Trey has... It's not like Trey has fallen off a cliff. 
he's not having a great statistical season, right? He, he's shooting a very low percentage. I think it's 31 percent, 31 and a half percent, or whatever like that from three. He was three of six last night. We talked about yesterday on the show. He's 143rd in three-point percentage. You know, you can't be you can't be the level of Trey when you've given up, you know, Luka Doncic, who is making a run at the MVP, right? You know, you, you can't have been involved in that kind of a deal and get the Supermax money. And then, I don't want to say laying an egg, but but certainly he's not had his best season. And I thought he played really well last year. I mean, I, I thought he, I thought the last couple of years he's been outstanding. You know, coming off of his rookie year where he really got his feet wet and then, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals run and then even last year. And he stepped up in the playoffs when when it mattered most, you know, in the play-in games, he stepped his game up. But I think when you look at the way that they finished up against Miami, where they were certainly overmatched by all of it, and the comments that he made last year, like it's all of these little things. It's not that he's a bad player. It's not that he's had a big step backward and he's having a disastrous season, but there just isn't that connection. And I think we all want to see Trey just step up and be a leader. You know, whether or not he gets along with his coach, just step up and be the leader of this franchise. And, and maybe that's not what he's capable of doing. You know, just because you make the most money on a team doesn't mean that you're the automatic leader of the team. You would like to think that those things go hand in hand, but they don't always happen that way. You know, and it's funny, some of the conspiracy theories. Oh, we haven't been the same same team since Solomon Hill left. Solomon Hill? Like if, if that's the guy that's been the big difference between us being a, you know, top tier team in the Eastern Conference ready to make a playoff run, and we're just literally playing, you know, getting in the playing round. If Solomon Hill's that big of a difference, then we've got all the wrong guys. We've, we've got all we've we've got we've got all the wrong guys. Collins, Bogey, Hunter, we got all the wrong guys. But you would you would just think that this franchise should be better. And you know, maybe DeJounte Murray has acquiesced a little bit. You know, maybe he looks at this as Trey Young's team. But I would love to see DeJounte Murray step up and take a little bit more of a leadership role. You know, it's going to be fascinating to see. You have DeJounte Murray for this year, and then you've got him for next year. But then after that, he's an unrestricted free agent, and he could very much walk. I'm going to be very curious to see if the Hawks hitch their wagon to him because he's going to be a max money caliber player, right? Like he's probably going to get a he's probably going to get a contract bigger than what John Collins has. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. He's probably going to get a bigger uh, contract than what John Collins is, you know, get what is getting. I think it's five for 125 or whatever like that. He's going to get, you know, a max type of deal. But there just seems to be some kind of chromosome missing that this franchise isn't better. And, and it's, I think, a big reason why Tony Ressler has not been willing to get into the luxury tax. Because they look at this, you know, they look at this franchise, and and if you're Tony Wrestler, you're saying, okay, I'm paying Trey Young super max money, I'm paying John Collins a lot of money, I'm paying um, uh, Clint Capella a good amount of money. I just signed up, you know, DeAndre Hunter to a big time extension, probably more than he's worth at twenty three million dollars a year for a fifteen five guy. That's a a good but not great defensive player. Like they've paid out a whole bunch of this money to these guys. But there's some kind of chromosome missing. And again, you know, maybe Trey should be more of a leader. Maybe that's the responsibility that you have when you come along and you're the highest paid guy and you're a super max guy, right? Because it is. I mean, you know, you when you look at Trey Young, you think that he should naturally be the leader because he makes the most money. 
But again, it doesn't really always work that way. And, and I really hope that they find a way to keep DeJounte Murray here. You know, it'll be interesting to see if DeJounte Murray honestly just gets away from the mess of what the Hawks and Trey Young are, and, and he just goes off to another franchise. If he stays here, that'll tell me a lot. That'll tell me a lot about, because remember, Trey Young basically recruited DeJounte Murray. You know, they were all on board with bringing in DeJounte Murray here. You know, he had talked about it, and I, I interviewed DeJounte Murray when he first came to the Hawks and, you know, talked to him about that and him and Trey's relationship and all that. It's not that they have a bad relationship or anything, but you wonder whether or not a guy like DeJounte Murray will look at the dysfunction of this organization and head for higher ground, especially if they are on their third coach in six years. So I don't know what the what the real issue is. If it's just, if it is Nate McMillan, if there is some immaturity on Trey Young's part, but it just doesn't feel like he's as beloved a figure as he was just a few years ago. And maybe winning cures everything like that, but it just it doesn't feel right now like he's the guy that is the same beloved character.